Hey, happy Friday. It's happy Sam Friday. and Tara. We're here for best of the week. Yes. Uh, bringing is, to you. Yeah. yeah, we're just we're just so ready to get started, y'all. We don't even know where to begin. We really are. Uh, so if you don't know, best of the week is a weekly email that Progress Texas puts out, and we've also transitioned this into a weekly video. So if you've tuned in before to some of our live videos, you might have seen Samurai or maybe Charlie or Wesley, some of our other staffers, and we're here to talk about what we saw this week. Yes, and please, if there's anything here you like, share. Let your friends know what's happening in Texas, too. Uh, we got to bring more people into the fold, and it starts with the, just a little click of a button. Totally. Yeah, but before we start, we wanted to make sure we, like, cheers. Oh, cheers. absolutely. We got to open what you, these up. What do you got? I got a Texas Beer Company. It's an awesome little spot just out in Taylor, Texas. Amazing. I have a Carbock Love Street brewed in Houston. Very excited about. What, what kind of beer is that? It's a blonde mine is a strawberry <laughs> chocolate stout wow so cheers to friday and cheers to friday progress yeah. is doing good things all right it's like coffee oh really yeah that's cool not bad <laughs> so what are some of the things that you saw happen this week i think a lot of us have some knowledge about what are the big news stories right now but what was something that you wanted to bring to the table I mean, today. I think today we got some, uh, not it's not quite unexpected, right? We knew that this was gonna be happening with Trump and the border wall and it just keeps going, right? It's not, it's not stopping. No, it's not. And so today he had a press conference this morning about how he's declaring a national emergency about the need for a wall. And I think as both of us, um, we've talked about before about being valley girls and being kind of like <laughs> grown up in the valley. Um, the Rio Grande Valley. The Rio Grande who Valley. don't know that term. Yes. Um, I think that it hits really close to home when a lot of these, a lot of the wall is going to be going in at the valley and in the valley. And I know some of the like national parks or like state parks that are down there are being the spared and center. yes and like won't have a wall there but in a lot of cases people's private land people's land that they've been on for generations and just like place other places in the valley are still going to have a wall and i know that was really concerning for me and like talking to friends and family about this it's it's kind of hard to say i mean it's not hard to say i'm very against the wall and i know we both are but I mean, this is going to have such a huge impact on the valley. Mm -hmm. And I think you're really getting to something, Tara, where like we, we both grew up there, right? And I think our experiences are a little bit different where like you grew up in some of like the more farm <laughs> communities of, of South Texas. And I grew up right on the border coming in and out of Brownsville to Matamoros every day. And one of the things that we just like we know that people down in South Texas and along the border are really hardworking people. Yeah, they're hardworking people with families whose land is a part of creating a business. And just seeing the way the United States has talked about the border is is so inhumane. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, I think, part of what we've been doing here at Progress Texas with a four-part series that we've um, been creating since the shutdown is really reminding folks that. You know there is life on the border, and it's and it's vibrant. The the people there are vibrant. The economy's vibrant. Yeah, and this is a place where people are raising their families. This is a place where we grew up. This is a place where people go to school. This is a normal community, a community that has these close ties with Mexico, these close business ties, these close family ties, and all of a sudden, this huge wall that I know, Glenn, who's our senior advisor on staff, has described the wall as this like burning cross in the front yard of America, mm -hmm. which is like this huge, um, I guess, simile or, or metaphor, I whichever mean, the, the appropriate word it, is. It but evokes something that we just know about our history here in this country, right? Yes, and I think that the wall is definitely like a furtherment of that history. And so I am taking note that this emergency declaration does not mean that this is the end, this is not, the end of our fight. This is, in a lot of cases, just a continuation of the fight that's been going on. And I think that we've talked a lot, even with um, Republican, you know, kind of like media people about how this will get tied up in courts for a very long time. Um, so I think in the meantime, keeping our voices heard, making sure that we're saying no border wall, and we mean no when we say mm -hmm. no border wall is really important. Especially if you're someone from Houston, Austin, Dallas, 
um, and, and you just believe firmly that we should not be building a wall on the border. I mean, this is our opportunity to speak up and really support the communities along the border that are facing this every day, right? Yeah. I was talking to some folks who's, um, who own land and they were talking to me about how, I mean, it's been in their family for years and they're talking to me about how they saw just construction equipment come through their land to start setting up for this border. I mean, we really need to take a stand and start sharing just our stories. I mean, we don't, we might not live in the valley anymore. We go down and visit, you know, I, I go down and visit when I can, but it's still something that's near and dear to my heart. And so we ask y'all to say no to the border wall. Yes. We're going to be keeping our eye on this. Um, and there's just so many ways that you can go ahead and take action. And I think there's a couple of things that we can expect from uh, once the signing of the national emergency, right? We can expect Democrats to create a strategy or progressives to create a strategy around the border wall. And we're gonna be seeing a lot of advocates um, go ahead and, and start doing some lawsuits and, and we'll be keeping an eye on those as they move. Totally, and we wanted to try something in this week's Best of the Week. So our staff member, Charlie Bonner, is actually in Washington, Washington D.C. at the Capitol, and we really wanted to check in with him on what he's seeing. So if you give us just a quick moment to troubleshoot, we are going to try to bring him in to see if he can talk to us on this live video, but we will see what happens. And Charlie is a great member of our staff. You've probably seen him on Best of the Week and mm -hmm. in some of our podcasts talking about elections, what's happening at the Capitol. Um, and we're going to see if we can get him in today. Charlie, can you hear us? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem to be working, so we will probably pause this, put a pin in it, and maybe try this next week again. But we are really excited to bring in new voices in the future, bring in some of our partners and get to talk to them during these best of the week videos. So if you have any suggestions, please drop them in the comments below. I know something else that we're following a lot here is David Whitley and the history of voter suppression that we have in Texas Girl. and what's been happening. I know Sam, you've been at the Capitol, you testified against David Whitley. So what are what are you seeing now? And can yeah. you give us a little bit of background? Yeah, let's let's talk about it because I'm sure for folks watching, you're going to keep on seeing stuff about the Secretary of State, things about Texas elections. And so let's we can rewind a little bit, but know that this is going to keep on happening. There's still so much work to do to ensure that Texans can go out and vote. Um, and so Last uh, last month, we um, there was some information sent out from the top elections official of Texas and our Attorney General Ken Paxton about um, this data showing that non-citizens were voting on our elections, and they pushed it out on a Friday afternoon, trying to make some noise around that non-citizens were voting in our elections, which just wasn't true. Um, and so what counties and election officials across the state have found out, and even voters whose names were on that list, is that that, that list is bogus. There have been so many names retracted from that list. Um, and some of our good friends like Common Cause and the Texas Civil Rights Project and the ACLU have been calling on the Secretary of State to rescind the information that he sent out. He did not. Um, and the thing about this guy is that he's on the job, but hasn't been a, appointed or confirmed for this he hasn't position. Been confirmed, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, we've written about how that's like a little bit of a tricky part of Texas law that he's still able to do this job even though he hasn't been confirmed for the job. So it's like getting a job because the governor really likes you, but you haven't gone through the job interview yet, and you haven't been officially offered it. So. It's definitely a piece of Texas law that seems really backwards, but um, we are excited to continue following this and making sure that people do not lose their right to mm -hmm. vote, which is so important and yeah, and just illegal for them to be doing. Incredibly, yeah. right? It's part of a dirty, dirty history we have here in Texas of people's rights and ability to vote be taken away. And so, as he put out, as David Whitley, the top election official, put out this list. He put out this list and said, these are the people who are non-voting, who are not citizens and are voting in our elections. Turns out these folks are, have been naturalized in the last 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they're they able to vote, they have a driver's license, they have been living and working in the United States for quite a long time. And so those voters are 
are stepping up and they're making their voices heard. But what is really dangerous about this is once you're on this list, um, the state will send you a letter. And if you do not reply to that letter, if you actually never get that letter, if you're not able to get your birth certificate in, because that's what they want to see, a birth certificate, then that means that you lose your right to vote and you're just kicked off. And our biggest concern is what's going to happen to those voters who don't have that information or don't know how to get back to the state. Yeah. And it might be, you know, like a working mom. It might be someone who's just really busy. It might be someone, I know, like, I don't check my mail probably as often as I should. And so, like, there are so many reasons why this is, one, not an effective way to get in touch with people, but mm -hmm. two, if this person is a citizen, they shouldn't have to reconfirm their citizenship. You should be innocent until proven guilty, not having to just prove something just because the state decides that mm -hmm. you're on this list for no reason. Yeah, and so while this is happening with... Um, David Whitley and state lawmakers. This is all happening right here. Um, we also know that there's a bill that's trying, that's moving through the House. It has not yet been heard in committee, but there is a bill in our state House that is working to require people to show their birth certificate when, regist when registering to vote. I mean, there's just so many barriers the state keeps on pushing to keep mm -hmm. people from voting, and we need to keep an eye on it. And so here yeah. at Progress Texas, we're going to be calling on you to make sure that we're showing up at the Capitol, making our voices heard, and making sure that everyone who's able to vote, who's eligible to vote, is able to vote, right? Totally. Yes. Yeah. I'm excited to see. I know you're at the Capitol a lot, and so I'm excited to see what those days are that we can kind of go in mm -hmm. there and make sure they make our voices heard, and we'll be sure to share that with you guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. What you were at the Capitol this week too. I mean, what were what were you up to there? Tara? I was with you. <laughs> but, um, we were there for a press conference on Rosie's Law, which is another bill that's been filed here at the Texas Ledge by Representative Cheryl Cole and really pushed forward by some of our abortion funders like Lilith Fund, T Fund, and Front Data Fund. And so it's a really, really important law to make sure that regardless of wealth, regardless of status, regardless of the color of your skin, and regardless of who you are as a Texan, you're able to access abortion services and abortion care here in the state. And so it's named after Rosie Jimenez, who is actually a woman from the Rio Grande Valley, from the McAllen area. And because of the Hyde Amendment, which is this law that's been on the Texas books for a while, she was not able to afford an abortion because from like conventional means because it wasn't covered by her insurance. Mm -hmm. So this bill seeks to make sure that abortion is covered, that we make sure that even though you know like things like vasectomies are covered abortion isn't and so we're really excited to see this bill move forward i think we have a lot of really good movement around it and we're excited to see kind of how we can make our voices heard and make sure mm -hmm. that it's not just like wealthy white women who can access abortion services it's everyone yeah and god we gotta we gotta give so much love and shout out our amazing abortion funders here in texas mm -hmm the Lilith Fund, T Fund up in North Texas, and the Frontera Fund down in the valley. And let's just shout out West, uh, 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 West Fund and El Paso mm -hmm. for being able to, to provide funds and be able to give women access to getting a safe abortion. Totally, yes. Thank you guys so much. For all that you do. Yes, and if you haven't heard of abortion funds, I know kind of before I came into this line of work, that was something that I didn't know existed, mm -hmm. but their work is so important, so I encourage you to follow them and kind of get in the know of what's going on, and they're really cool, so yeah. I think I will say, we've been talking a lot about going to the Capitol, mm -hmm. things that have been happening in the Capitol, and so, uh, subscribe to our best of the week email in that email we lay out different events that are happening in Texas across the state yes across the state so if you're not in Austin or if it's really hard for you to get to the capital I know like if you're not here it is really difficult to even just make a trip so we have events like all over the place I know in this week's best of the week there's an event in Corpus that you can mm -hmm. go to there's some stuff going on in the valley all the time some stuff in El Paso and some stuff up in the DFW area where you can really connect with these organizations and make sure that you are making your voice heard from where you live and for your community too. And the events range, it could be from volunteering to helping people out with an event to providing some sort of legal assistance or prepping mm -hmm. some kind of legal care or going to the Capitol and doing some lobby days and get like really going to those offices and telling them 
what you telling lawmakers what you think they should be doing. Um, so please subscribe to Best of the Week. We have the link in the comment section. Yes, and something else that we highlight this week in Best of the Week are a range of Black History Month events that we're really excited about here across the state. We want to remind everybody that February is Black History Month, and we've been following that. We also have a series, if you want to check out our Instagram or any of our other social medias, um, where we're highlighting um, black progressive leaders in our state that are doing the really good work right now. Yeah, and it's really like, there's so much space there's so much space to make when it comes to to making sure that we're uplifting progressive voices and progressive people of color and progressive black leaders. And so this week we um, we highlighted Cam Camion Connor, who is the executive director of the T Fund, an abortion fund that we just mentioned. They're doing some amazing work up in Dallas, making sure that women in the North Texas area are able to get access to abortions. Uh, we also highlighted Raven, what is Raven's last name? Douglas. Raven Douglas from Move Texas. They're an awesome group that does some amazing organizing with young people here in the state. And they're also one of the plaintiffs against the state for this whole voter list debacle. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. Raven has been doing some amazing work in San Antonio and throughout Texas. Um, to make, making sure young people have a voice in the state and it's amazing. and. and Man, like I, there's just some amazing black women in the state doing some phenomenal work, and I'm so like there's a there's a need to be showing off this work. It really is, and right before this video, we actually highlighted your friend Sasha oh, Lega yes. from yes. Workers Defense Project, and can you tell us? Yeah, a little bit so about Sasha that? is the Houston business liaison in uh, for Workers Defense Project, and she um, works on behalf of construction workers, making sure that they have a living wage a basic safety training and workers' compensation because in Texas, it's being a construction worker is one of the deadliest jobs that you can have here in Texas. And yeah. so she's doing some really amazing work uh, on behalf of the good people of Houston who are still rebuilding from Harvey. That's awesome. That's very cool. And we do have a face palm this week as well. Oh, we kind man. of always end our videos with a face palm and our emails with a face palm if you haven't seen it. So this week's face palm goes out to Dan Patrick. Boo. Boo. And he, our lieutenant governor, and he said some stuff. Um, I'm trying to pull up the direct quote just so I can not misquote him. But he basically said, if we don't get a wall that people are going to be hanging from bridges and like cutting their heads off and like some really terrible things overall and like you suck Dan Patrick I'm sorry yeah and I think for folks you know I think our face palm is from um Scott Braddock over at the Forum Report um he says if anyone thought Dan Patrick was moderating his tone after the election they didn't hear him screaming about heads rolling in Mexican pool halls on Fox News tonight and I mean this face palm is is um like when I read this, this is scary. Yeah. It's scary that Texas lawmakers think this way and it gives me so much energy and fury to go out to vote to make sure people are voting because I don't want someone like this be leading our state. He's just spreading these lies and these scare tactics and these like ways to inflame people and make mm -hmm. them scared and mm -hmm. that's not the case. That's not what's happening in mm -hmm. Texas. So and I think we know that. I'm assuming Dan Patrick lives somewhere in Texas and he obviously <laughs> lives in a very different place. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. And I think this is all part of, you know, I think progressives made waves last year, right? We, we got more seats in the house. We sent two awesome Latinas to Congress. There's Colin Allred up in the North Texas area. I mean, we are really coming after those seats. And I think this is, this is something to show for what's happening. Totally. So as always, I think we're going to close out best of the week. But if there's anything we miss, anything you want us to talk about next week, anything you have a question about, please comment below. New Let beers us know. we should try. Let yes. us know. Some Texas beers if you think we should try those. Um, make sure you sign up for our email. And you can do that at progresstexas.org slash subscribe. Happy Friday, y'all. Happy Friday. Have a Thanks, good one. guys.